good evening or good morning or hola all the way to Isidro in Portugal. Thank you for making the choice to be here with us. We uh, do this with our friends coming from different countries, even we never met before like us. And uh, today we're talking about choices. So this is a great choice that we are here together. So uh, if anyone who are listening to us right now or later on after today, I would like you and me to make a choice. Even it's hard, but it's important for us to live in a deeper ways in life and uh, can experience deeper dimension of our life, other people and life. So we have our friend today who made a great choice to go to Portugal and some other choices we're going to discover today. So come on in and share with us. What is the choice recently that you made that made you here today? Well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Jen, for, for, for inviting me for this, for this conversation, this interview. And my choice was uh, say yes to the interview. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm here. And I was curious because I'm from a country that many people never heard before. I'm from Sao Tome and Principe. It's the second smallest country in Africa. It's uh, two islands. And uh, I've never been to, to Vietnam, even online before. It's very, my very first time. So I believe it's a, it was a great choice. <laughs> How did you make that choice? Because I think every day we make choices and we need to have maybe a mechanism or we don't call mechanism, but we may have criteria or the ways to really say, I will make this choice. Yes. Uh, after reaching the, the final of the World Championship of Public Speaking, uh, I received um, a lot of invitation for interviews and, and so on. But when, I, when you invited me, I wanted to know more about the podcast, uh, people that you have interviewed and so on. And I, it sound, I had this feeling that I, I should come because I, our time is limited, of course. Uh, we want to go, I, I want to, to take every opportunity that I have to, to speak because I used to be afraid of public speaking. So having taken every opportunity to speak allowed me to keep it this way, not, not being afraid of public speaking. I, it was like a gut feeling. I, did, I wanted to, to, to speak with you uh, and create this connection between Vietnam and Saint May Principe somehow, with Portugal in between, because it's my two countries that I love. And so, yes, it's definitely a great choice and easy to, to make. Thank you, Khang, for making it happen to connect us. And you talk about gut feeling. How can a person know gut feeling is an effective way or not effective way and how can we develop that because I believe in gut feeling and it's not about like a random thing but it's more like the accumulation of our experiences our awareness and our belief on something is important to us or to what we do so how can we kind of reconceptualize that gut feeling and develop that well I don't have a, a, a deep uh, thought about that, mm -hmm. but I believe that when you have experience in something or uh, something you write or something, sometimes you are right, sometimes you are wrong. But of course, I don't, I don't uh, make all my choices based on a lot of math calc, you know, to mm. make it a lot of, you know, no. Sometimes I, it's, it's, it's a good to go with the flow, you know, yeah. sometimes it's good to feel surprised. 
And uh, when I when I, when I was invited, I said, "Okay, let's do it." But I, I don't have a deep thought about uh, mm -hmm. gut feelings. But I believe that life would be too boring if we did everything after a spreadsheet in Excel with a lot of numbers there. Oh, yes, I should do this. No, come on. This is life. Sometimes we have to take risks, take chances, and, and have the adrenaline, you know? <laughs> I just want to say that most of our guests on our podcast also share the same kind of feeling. So I just want to say thanks to everyone who for listening it right now, or later who contributes to, to really why you or other speakers come here with us, because we, we feel like we're going to create something together. And uh, going back to, to, let's say, a little bit younger of Isidro, how did you make the very first important choice? And I know that it was the movement of going from your original country to now Portugal. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my country now, um, we have universities there. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. three or four universities. Mm -hmm. But in the 80s, uh, we didn't have any university. So every student that finished high school had to come abroad to, to study, to continue university uh, de degree uh, studies and so on. So it was my destiny. I knew mm -hmm. that I had to go out to have a university degree, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know which country um, I would go to. So. I didn't choose Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the days, I, I had two top countries to go. I wanted to go to France or to United States because of English. I wanted to improve my, mm -hmm. my English or France to improve my French. But I, I, I used to say that Portugal has chosen me. It was different. Mm. Uh, and now I love Portugal. So I believe that it was a... a perfect chance by, by Portugal. Yes, I came to study uh, and I studied, uh, uh, I took a degree, a university degree in information system or computer science and management. And, and then I decided to, to work in Portugal. Uh, then after that, I, I took a master in innovation management and, and and I took an MBA as, as well. So mm. uh, my life is uh, related to Portugal. I'm bound, there, there is a connection. Mm -hmm. So I feel Portuguese as well. Lovely. So you made uh, continuous choices related to especially education. And you made the choice First, it's like in the location. So uh, what, what was the thinking process of choosing that? And did you have to overcome the fears or the doubts because you want to move to somewhere new and somewhere that you, you don't have this and that? How could you overcome that fear if you had? Uh, actually, moving, uh, I, I was not afraid of moving. I, I was afraid of not have to move. Uh, oh. you, you know that? Because so you had a bigger fear. No, no, it was not a fear at all. Because let's say, let's see, you, you finish high school, right? Mm -hmm. So the next step is university. Mm -hmm. We didn't have university back in the 80s in my own okay. country. So the most. So I had to go to the university. So I was not afraid of, of, of moving. But of course, there were some challenges mm -hmm. uh, and in the cultural differences. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my country is very hot all, all the time. And Portugal, I came in the, in the winter. It mm -hmm. was cold. I was not used to that. It's like totally different. Totally different, and I didn't know how to to 
to wear myself to be comfortable in the winter time. I used to put a lot of clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and even in some small cultural habits uh, that people had. I, I used to dance different kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh, my colleagues in, in Portugal, um, they loved hard rock. And I was not used to the hard rock. It mm -hmm. sounded like nothing for me. Uh, but I got used to a lot of things. And, and that's the, the, beauty, the beauty of diversity. When you choose to get to know different cultures, maybe that's why I've, I've chosen to, to come here too, because Vietnam, I've never been to, I've never talked with, with someone uh, from Vietnam before. And when we, we create a lot of image in our brain about people from some culture, people from, uh, people from Asia are like this, people from Africa are like this, from Europe, that and that. And then we get surprised when we meet people and we look in the eyes and we, we feel some connections. After all, we are all human beings, right? And, and that amazes me because this, it, is, it is beautiful. So every time I have a choice to, new, uh, to get to know, to meet new people, believe me, I will choose it. Uh, because it's saying that it's it, uh, it is really worth it to meet new people, uh, get to know new cultures, and mm -hmm. the diversity and the beauty of this planet, the planet Earth. Wow. So I think there is something is more important if we can ignite that and we can like, really focus on that in your story it was like the the must to to really go further on your education and then the openness and then that openness to the diversity we can see the beauty and you, you was talking about you chose to see that beauty so everyone who is here right now if you are going to anywhere even maybe it is like a challenge or maybe difficulty but choose to see what else what is the beauty in it so what is the thing that the most, let's say, challenging thing in your life that you had to make, make a very difficult question, a very difficult choice, but that difficult choice really like turned your life around? Uh, it was not a difficult choice, but it was the, the biggest change in my life. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I used to, to be afraid of public speaking. When I say young, I, I say until <laughs> 2017. So it was six or five years ago, okay? <laughs> I was afraid of public speaking. Uh, but it was not a small fear. Oh, I am afraid of public speaking. No, it was a huge fear of it's public like, speaking. It's uh, like most of the friends who we are oh. Yeah. In my case, it was like a, it was a glossophobia. As, as a die or speak, right? Yes, yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I was introduced to Toastmasters. And I joined Toastmasters in, in my middle 40s. Mm -hmm. And I decided that it was my last chance to overcome this, this fear. Because when you are afraid of public speaking, you don't live, you don't have a life, you survive. It's different. Oh. Now I have the freedom. I feel free to, to accept your invitation and being here. I have this freedom of choice. You know, in the past, I, I have just one answer. It's no. You see, you <laughs> come, come to, I want to interview you. It's no. Like, no way, I could be my no. session now. Anyway. I have to go, I have to go because I have things to do, some paperwork to, to do, and I can. And what about next week? I will have things to do too. <laughs> but now I have this freedom. And I joined Toastmasters. Uh, 
as I said, this is my last chance to overcome this feeling. So I decided to be a sponge, like a sponge, absorb every feedback that uh, were given to me or to others. I will write it down, practice, practice, practice. And before I noticed, I was winning contest, 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 contest. And in 2021, I reached the final. I was the European champion of public speaking. And I reached the final of the World Championship of Public Speaking, the same year where Verity Price was. Verity Price beat me. I let her win, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello, if you are here, yeah. Bring it no, back she, for him. No, she was amazing. I'm kidding, of course, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and before that, I had been uh, three times in a row the winner of the Iberian uh, competition in Portugal and Spain, which is a district 107 in Tosmas. Now we have Morocco as well. And, but and, and back in, in, in when I won three times in a row, it was Portugal, uh, Spain, and Andorra. Um, and, and yes, because I dared. To, to try, but I say that it was not a, a difficult choice because being afraid of public speaking was painful for me. So I need to change. When I, I got to know Toastmasters, I said, I need this, I want this. It was not a difficult choice, but I, I did it there to go to competitions, to, to challenge myself. And when you challenge yourself, when you choose to challenge yourself, when you choose to um, uh, go out of your comfort zone or go to your more comf even more comf uncomfortable oh. zone, because I, I didn't have a comfort zone as a with fear of public speaking, it was not a comfort zone. But, um, many possibilities opened. Mm. You know, uh, now I'm a coach. I coach people all over the world. I coach people in India. I coach people in the United States, um, in Canada, and Spain, Portugal, Germany. I coach people everywhere. And if I hadn't reached the final of the World Championship of Public Speaking, it I, it would it wouldn't be possible. It, you know, mm. or it would be it would be more difficult for people to get to know me as a coach. Uh, by the way, after winning the, the championship of Portugal and Spain in three times in a row, in the fourth time, uh, I, I, I coach a lady, she's a Canadian living in Spain, that she's an actual um, champion of the District 107, mm -hmm. and I coach there. So it's, it's amazing for me. Wow, well, it was a journey and starting with a choice to really challenge yourself yes. and to overcome one of the biggest fear. And I think it's like a domino, right? If we can find a like biggest one, like a domino one of the fear, then all the things in it, you know, like what you're doing right yeah. now, right? And exactly. I, I heard this story many times. This thing is so beautiful that anyone who's listening right now can actually identify that domino fear that you can press that button. It can be a very speaking thing. It can be like asking a girl out. It, it can be anything for you if you can think about it. And even you already overcome the previous one, but maybe now in the new stage, you can have a new, like, you know, comfort zone, right? So what was that process of, really saying like no more of saying no to public speaking and then made the choice to go to that club. What was that process? Because I think it, it's very like easy to describe, but it, it would be like a really, you know, a journey. Yes. Uh, well, actually, I, I was taking my MBA mm. and uh, uh, I was during my MBA, the beginning of my MBA, I was promoted to director, uh, reporting to the executive committee. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, how will I keep avoiding public speaking as a director? It will be very difficult. So for the very first time in my life, I, I asked for help. 
So mm. I asked three teachers mm. um, um, what to do to, to mm. lose, to overcome this fear. They told me that I had to speak in, in public more often. That's the yeah. advice that they gave me. It, it's so re rewarding, you know. It's it's. <laughs> Could you ask them like, like recommend it's, something else? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like telling you that I'm afraid of to die, and you tell me that I have to Let's die. Let's go to die. Me, you know, but it didn't make sense to me at the time. But I kept it. I kept it in my mind somehow. Mm -hmm. It was there, but I. I was thinking, how could I speak more often in public? No one would invite me to speak. And if they did, I would say no. So how could I do that? It wouldn't work. But in uh, 2017, a friend of mine joined Toastmasters and then he asked me, he said, oh, I joined something. It's, it's a, it's a public, public uh, speaking club. Uh, so you go there, you try to you to learn to speak well and, or to lose the fear of public speaking. I said, I didn't know that such thing existed. I want this, I need this. And then I went. Sometimes people go to several clubs. They go to one club and they do go to another club to feel the atmosphere, to feel if they like it. I... Um, in the first moment that I heard about the concept of Toastmasters, I said, I want this, I need this, and I'm joining. And then I went to the, the first meeting, um, and I stayed ever since. Wow. So I think it's the very first step. It's, it's normally the heaviest one. It's like, can be like 100 kilo of stones on us, but that move, if we, we can just, Take that. It's just like yeah, everything so, is his story. Yeah, we have to take the, the chance, we have to risk. Uh, it's like a muscle, right? When you mm. when you do, you have to put your muscle uh, at stress so that it can grow. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the same. You have to push yourself. Otherwise, you don't grow. You feel comfortable. You feel that you are comfortable at the moment but you don't grow. And mm. when sooner or later, you will realize that you should have done better in the past because you will mm. be uncomfortable uh, on the, the same position. Mm. So I get the one thing is like, if something is important, for example, for you at that time, doing that director role well, having, but speaking like a tool for doing it, and if it's important, then you do it. So maybe for our, our friends who are listening to us right now, or for myself, maybe it's, the, it's another thing. But if something is important and something that we are not good at yet, but it's important to, to really to do the important thing, then we have to do something about it. So what is the next fear for you? What is the next com uncomfortable zone for you? When you already get to that final round of world champion, you now you have other people to really make choices for their growth and their like bigger or higher confident level. So, what is the next for you? Next level, next next uh, challenge. Next fear, well, next uncomfortable zone. Well, I I I'm not uh, particularly uh, searing anything. I have challenges. Okay. I was afraid of public okay, speaking. I, I like that you don't like to use that word fear. <laughs> no, 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 no. The public speaking was definitely a fear. Okay. Okay. It was. I was completely afraid of public speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now. Uh, fear, fear, well, I don't have, I have challenges. Uh, I have a few important talks coming up. Uh, I will be in a, a TEDx um, uh, in June. I have a talk to deliver, a very important talk for me in, in, in May. Um, there, are, there are challenges, but my challenge is, uh, to scale my my coaching career, to scale my my 
uh, because you know we are in the contest season right now in those masks and i have uh, the contest of... comes to the corner <laughs> i yes. am going to the, the evaluation and uh the international one uh, in oh, my yeah. Uh, you are a con a con as a contestant or, or just to to attend as a I have been like doing that for many years and this is a third time that i am doing it for my country mm -hmm. oh congratulations. <laughs> okay. congratulations yeah you know the third time which means that the the other two times that didn't go well for the country <laughs> Uh, no no problem don't don't worry about that uh, the experience that you that you uh, gain everything you learn it's very important mm -hmm. uh, yeah uh, because we are in the contest se uh, season i have a lot of people to coach mm -hmm. i'm coaching several people uh, but i would like to scale my business in order to, I coach some people outside of those masters as well. Some executive or other people, not executive, but other people. But I'm trying to scale my, my business uh, because people that, that work with me, they say that they like to work with me. Uh, I never reveal people that that work with me unless they reveal it themselves and um, the current district 107 champion she revealed that she had hired me to coach her so i feel free to say the same i coach her last year and i'm coaching her this year as well but uh, yes this is my challenge not fear i'm not fearing yeah. uh, Dead. It's like something you have to do and you know you want to do it, but it's more like how you're going to make that impact, how you going to make that results. It's like a, a journey. Yes, it's a journey. Mm. And uh, if, 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 I know that it, it will not be easy, but mm. I have this in my mind. Uh, my biggest flaw became uh, the thing that gave me the most international recognition. Okay. You know, so my fear of public speaking was the biggest challenge for me. And now I'm coaching people. I became the European champion. I became the first Portuguese ever reaching the final of the world championship of public speaking. And I'm, I'm coaching people around the world. So having the same mindset you can try to do everything okay it is difficult you know it but if you have uh, help from other people if you try to to study if you try to learn from others if you dedicate yourself if you work hard it is possible to do a lot of things. Of course, we cannot do everything that we want. And I don't like when people say, you can do, we can be, you can be whatever you want. It, that's not true, okay? This is not true. Of course, I, I understand that it's a motivational speech, okay? It's not literal. Oh my God, it sounds like a motivational speech in a contest. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not literal when you say you can do everything, but it's not true. I don't say that. You cannot be everything you want, but most of the thing that you uh, uh, think that you're not able to do, you are wrong. Most of them, you can. You can do it, but you just have to do it differently. Or mm. you can do it, you just have to need more support, more mm. help. You, yeah, but you can do it. You can do it in your own pace. Can mm. can be faster, can be slower, uh, but you can do it. If you so really I believe want it is like trusting the process, trusting yourself. Yeah. Because sometimes we may like see something that not the way it is. We have some stories that may not support us, and. Uh, we talk about the choice, the biggest fear, and you made a choice to challenge yourself. 
by looking at what is important and if it's important to do for what is important for us, then we, we're going to take that first step. And you're talking about now the challenge. So what is the, the choice that you make? Like let's say the new choice you will have to really make that journey happen in a way that you feel proud of. And how can we who yeah. are listening to it right now can also think about that question. If we have yeah. a challenge right now, what is that choice that we need to make? You have, well, I right now I combining my coaching career, I coach most of the time uh, on, on weekends. Okay. Uh, or sometimes at night mm -hmm. because I have to to have my day job, which I, I love as well. Yeah. Uh, I feel I love to do it. So I have to combine this. But my challenge is to 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 scale my project. I have a few ideas, mm -hmm. but I definitely will work on, the, on them uh, later after the TEDx, because okay. I have two talks, two, two speech, two important speech to deliver, one in May, another one in TEDx in June. Mm -hmm. I don't want to... to, to Overload. Yeah. Yes. But after that, I have some business strategies mm -hmm. that I will try to... to to, to implement in order to scale my project, to wow. help more people out there, uh, you know, get to know, make myself visible. Mm. Okay? So the because two events you, coming going to be very helpful for that. Yes, yes, it's going to be uh, helpful. The, but, but make myself visible so people can know that I can help them. I, I, I remember I was uh, coaching um, one guy, I'm coaching one guy from Germany. He, he, he had never heard about, about me. But coincidentally, we, we met each other in an in a online session, a Toastmaster online session, and we are working very well. So uh, I need to do, I need to do it. So in June, I, I will start to do some We're choices looking forward that, to it. that yes, I cannot reveal, that I cannot reveal completely yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm really looking forward to it and uh, all the dominoes continue happening as we keep going. So we talk about your first choice in your earlier life and then the choice now in your career and like turning your passion to become a career. It also like a choice that you already made in here, right? So it, it's very beautiful if myself or kind of anyone listening to right now also asking like, what is that next choice? Because every day I think we make a choice daily. So we have one question. Now from the audience, before we go into the end, we kind of having now some data from IZ Draw. So has, we have some question here. What is the most important daily choice for us? Well, I, I, I will say that the most important daily choice is uh, think positively. Yeah think positive uh, instead of think negative think positive uh, at the end of the day uh, at the end of the day um, literally or not you will feel much better if you think and try to avoid negative per people uh, sometimes i sometimes i'm negative myself but I, i'm try all the time to 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 be more positive and this is, there are research about that. When you, instead of saying, I cannot do that, oh my goodness, I cannot do that. If you say, I can do it, I just have, I just need one 
uh, day more, or I can do it, I just need some help. It's different. It makes you feel, feel different. Yes, it, if you, every day that you wake up, if you think positive, it will be, will help you in your journey. Hmm. I think it's always easier said than done. And yes, okay. definitely. And especially when uh, we have even some thinking about positive thinking is like, like just like, you know, something that I'm not really working. I even have like heard that kind of thing. And I, I'm just seeing every day now, we see so many different like disempowering things. And I think, like, why not? Like if the positivity can overweight all of these disempowering things, we can really use our mind on what really matters. So very, very nice to say that. You so know how what, can you... Jen, Jen, what's that? The, I, I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's, uh, it's more difficult to, to do it than, than uh, it seems. But if you can uh, think, if you can do it 50% mm -hmm. of your time, you are, you are, you are improving. Okay, yeah. there are things that sometimes you are worrying about things that it's not a big issue. Mm. Uh, and if we can have this positive attitude all the time, of course, we will face difficulty as well. Uh, it will not be rainbows and unicorns all the time and teddy bears. No, Some, you will face difficulty in your, in your, in your journey. But instead of uh, anticipating problems, anticipating stress, anticipating mm -hmm. anxiety, you can just think more positive and say, okay, maybe I will not do it as just like other people did it. I will do it differently because I'm different. I will do it differently because I don't have enough skills, but I will do it. Just the matter of fact that you are telling yourself that you will do it, that you are able to do it, it's it's different. You will not be you will be less stressed. It's it it's it's just an advice. Try it. <laughs> People it's, out there, try it. You will see. It would help. So I think uh, we can think of if we don't think positively, even because I think sometimes we think like thinking positively can help us to really make things happen. But if we don't do that, maybe it get worse, right? So I think the idea like not about not aware, being aware of something and only like see it positively and even ignore the things. It's more about being aware of that, but we can use that positive attitude, as you said, to really make a decision or make our choice for the next move rather yeah. than, yeah. So even when you, and I'm not saying, let's say that you are starting a project, right? Mm -hmm. And you're starting a project, there are risks. Uh, you uh, thinking uh, in a positive way, it's not say, oh no, there is no risk, I go. No, there is no risk. No, it's not like that. You will list all the risks that you have, and then you will make a, a risk management. Oh, so and it's you like take say, the prepare risks, right? Yeah, you prepare for each risk. And you say, okay, the, if this happen, I do this. If this happen, I do this. If this happen, I do this. But you think positively, you know? Not be naive, focus. not being naive, but mm. think positively. Wow, that's that's so beautiful. I think it's really about we're gonna practice it, as you said, as the thing that gonna get stronger. We can distinguish being naive or being really positive in a way to really create solution to move forward. Yes. So, what is the habit, positive habit that you choose every day? I mean, we well, have the choice of think positively. So what, what is that thinking? What is that habit? The habits, in terms of habits. Well, I have a habit to, to, to learn a little bit in the beginning of the day. 
Oh. I, I wake up. Uh, oh, I'm writing my book right now. Or I write a little bit, or I read a little bit, or I watch a TEDx, or I, I sometimes I take uh, courses online, a tech course or public speaking or something like that, or I watch a TED, or I practice my English mm -hmm. um, or other languages. Uh, you know, I I have to 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 exercise my brain in the morning before going to the to, to the office to work. I do mm. this every day. Do you know Duolingo? The, the, yeah. yeah. Do you do... install Vietnamese? Not what? Do you, do you install Vietnamese in the Duolingo? Yes. Did you try? Yeah. I, I tried Duolingo uh, and I'm almost two years in a row practicing. Uh, and I do a little bit of Duolingo in the morning, and then I read a little bit books that, I, that I'm reading. And sometimes I write in the morning, sometimes I write in the, in the end of the day. And I watch a TED, a TED Talks, uh, or, or I have courses from Udemy that, that I take. Mm -hmm. And I like to do this kind of things. Uh, wow, it's kind of like... Uh in a way of learning and creating things that matter to your career. So I think like you're working on your passion and your career and the habits is like really support that. So you already named some of the habits that if any friend here can actually continue doing with us, I think writing like beautiful, reading also beautiful, watching something like inspiration that is or informative, and uh, especially you are going to have one. So we love to have the link to that that day. So yeah, what is your choice in the very early morning when you just first wake up? Either the choice to go to consume email, Facebook, Instagram, great, if you check it, the message from oh, I no, no, no. But instead of that, like on the mode of learning and- Well, uh, my, my first choice in the morning- is, Drinking water. Is, if I don't have to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you chose to not. <laughs> yeah, if I don't have to. My first choice is, is uh, my Duolingo uh, uh, lesson wow. in order to, to keep my strike, you know. Mm. Uh, um, and after Duolingo, uh, it depends because I'm, the book I'm writing, I need to study. The book I'm writing is about my story. It's uh, three things, my story and uh, a fear, then reaching the final of the world championship and so on and so on. Uh, I will teach public speaking, all the tools that I know, the techniques, how to, to, to engage with the audience, everything, teaching public speaking. And then in the third part of my book, I will try to find a scientific explanation for each step of my metamorphosis, of my transformation, explain it with science. So I bought a few articles and books that I'm reading to try to, 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 to explain. In the first person, I will say, I was feeling this. At that stage, I was feeling this what science says about that. And then I change to, to another level and I will try to explain that. So I write, I read, I do lessons. Uh, and because I, my, my, my job is about technology, in technology, you go, uh, you go to, to bed and when you wake up in the morning, you are outdated already. Mm. Because the the flow of the techno the flow of technology is so fast that you get outdated very fast. So you have to to follow some 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 mentors, some YouTubers, some uh, uh, articles. Yes, that you have to keep updated. Updated. Thank you, because I think we catch the keyword, which is the very specific thing like the very first joy in the morning like you where you 
Duolingo. So what is that one for everyone who is watching right now? It says like, take that pen and write something or put the shoe on to go somewhere. Very specific thing, right? It's like, it's, it's more difficult to not choose that because it's so specific. Oh, thank you. And I think we have some choices today with you and uh, we uh, don't want to make the choice to finish it, but we will <laughs> because we're going to move on another choice is that uh, continuous supporting what we do. So uh, we let, like to hear what is that book that you're writing, the name of that. And if you have another book that you will choose to write later on, what would be the title? So you're talking about well, the current book I, and the, the live book that later on you may, you may write. Yeah. Well, uh, this book uh, doesn't have the title yet. I have a few ideas in my mind, but uh, I haven't chosen any yet. Uh, and I don't know if I will write a different book in the, in the future, but if I had to do it, uh, I would like to share my experience on how I scaled my, my business. Mm -hmm. That would mean that I, I uh, that it, it went well and that mm -hmm. I had scaled my business. It would be great. But for now, I'm thinking about this book, uh, but the next book, I don't even have a name for this book yet. <laughs> so, no name. <laughs> no no okay. name. Okay, thank you. But we know the three parts of that and we look forward to it. And uh, uh, we can follow you on LinkedIn and Facebook, I believe, with the yes. same name. Same and, name, uh, Zidu Souza. Mm -hmm. You can find me on YouTube and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram or LinkedIn. Yeah. Yes. And soon you will put the link, the TEDx on that. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, everyone. Thank you for choosing to be with us until this very moment. And uh, we, we see like we made this choice, even we never met. And I think that choice will have another kind of blossoming things in the future. We don't even need to think about, but it will happen. And so thank you for being with us here today. Can you choose a challenge for us to go back home today to choose to do that? Yes, it's a it's a it's a challenge that I would like everybody to take is to but it's it's not inspirational uh, challenge. <laughs> okay. What is that? <laughs> it's it's simple. It's go and try to find my country in the in the Google Earth on in the, in the Google Maps. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Well, you know I why? think because very, I have very specific. Yeah. My country is Sao Tome and Principe. It's the second smallest country in Africa. But I have friends from all over the world. And when I say that I'm from Sao Tome and Principe, they are, what, when, what, where? where? Yeah. They don't know. <laughs> I don't even uh, like know that name, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this it's is some a challenge. Like many me. years ago, also Vietnam, some people like, this is, there's a name like, country Vietnam, but we have 100 million people now. So it's also another thing. <laughs> you know, Vietnam was, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, don't, <laughs> the war, don't, right? The war, don't, <laughs> don't, don't look back to the heavy past, but the yeah. war made your your country the name famous. Exists. Yeah. Exists. Even when I was in South May Prince, when I was a little, little you guy, still I, don't knew that. Oh. I knew your country because I, I didn't know many countries around around your country, but um, nearby your country. But I knew about Vietnam because of, unfortunately, because of the war. So I, I think it's, it's great because you at least knew that we exist. And thank you for putting us in the map of people that you, you talk with. And uh, yes. this is a great news. Vietnam is now like innovation thing happening and yes. it's really aligned with one of the keywords that you mentioned so you're going to be kind of very uh, surprising in a way where you see like how crazy and really like plurals that we have right now in this kind of innovation entrepreneurship so we love to welcome you here to really feel you with this uh, vietnam new kind of identity if you want to call and um 
one day I, I really I will, like yeah one day i will visit vietnam i will visit yeah. bangkok at least <laughs> yes. i know that people are gonna go to bangkok so now for vietnam nice to uh, the thing is like i hear your challenge and i know it comes from one habit you have mentioned at the beginning is the choice to be open to the differences the diversity and uh, yeah we know now a country that we cannot even call the name right now so uh, you know why not it, pick it out, easy right? easy easy uh, uh, an easy way to to say it's like saint thomas in portuguese saint thomas in portuguese is son to me and prince let's okay. say a priest the son of the king you know saint thomas and prince but in portuguese is son to me and principe yeah. Oh, Satume principi. Oh, yes, wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> we learned something like a new language too. So thank you so much for making the choice to be here with us and giving us a very specific choice to know about at least the, the shape of your country. And when we put in our mind, we never know we're going to figure out ourselves and be there physically one day. Uh, so, you never know. Yeah, but I have you. two countries. I have Satume and I have Portugal as well. Yeah, so, I, w I was in Spain. I, I know that now Portugal this year we had two of our guests actually now living in Portugal, including you. So we know that this is something going to happen in, yeah, in the yeah. future in some way. So I'm looking forward to it. So thank you, everyone. And I uh, hope you have reflected on some of the choices you have made in your life. And I feel proud of that because it made you here today and uh, make another choice that works for what you deserve the most and also support other people's choices. Love you. Thank you, Jen. And I wish you the best of luck for your project and everything that you, you have been done for, for the empowerment and, and so on.